Actually, today is Palm Sunday, in case you just forgot. Leo ni Jumapili ya Matawi. Ya Matawi. When the church remembers how Jesus entered Jerusalem. Ni wakati ambapo kanisa linakumbuka jinsi Yesu alingia pale Yerusalemu. And his entry into Jerusalem is usually called the triumphant entry. Na kuingia kwake pale Yerusalemu kunajulikana kama kuingia kwa ushindi. And therefore we are at one of the best moments in the church history. Kwa hivyo tuko katika wakati ambapo ni wa maana zaidi katika historia ya kanisa. Because if Christ never died and never rose again. Maana kama Yesu hangekufa na akafufuke tena. Then there would be no church. Basi hakungelikuwa na kanisa. Our moment of definition is right here. Wakati wetu wa umuhimu zaidi ndio huu. This is what says who we are. Hii ndio inaidhinisha sisi ni kina nani. This is what redemption is about. Huu ndio ukombozi unaosema. And therefore welcome us all into this online service. Kwa hivyo nawakaribisha katika ibada hii ya kimtandao. And I know that the Lord Lord is going to surely bless us in Jesus name. Uhakika ya kwamba Mungu anaenda kutubariki. This month I want to do a series on freedom. Mwezi huu nataka kuzungumzia mafunzo kuhusu uhuru. Because everywhere everyone is looking for freedom. Maana kila mahali kila mtu anatafuta uhuru. Freedom from oppressive laws. Uhuru kutokana na sheria za kukandamizwa. Financial freedom. Uhuru wa kifedha. Freedom to do whatever one wishes or willeth uhuru wa kufanya kile ambacho mtu anahitaji kufanya freedom to say whatever one wants pia uhuru wa kusema chochote utakacho but you know freedom is not just about the ability to do whatever you want lakini fahamu ya kwamba uhuru haihusu tu kusema jinsi ambavyo ungetaka not just about liberty to act and behave in whatever way you want ama uhuru tu wa kufanya na kusema jinsi ambavyo ungetaka scripture is full of another form of freedom maandiko yanazungumzia kuhusu uhuru aina nyingine which is greater than every other freedom ambao ni mkuu kuliko uhuru wa aina nyingine yote now let's to read the scriptures in the book of hebrews chapter 2 na nataka tukasome maandiko katika waebrania sura ya pili verse number 14 to 18 stari wa 14 hadi wa 18 and i say the one speak about freedom na nimesema kwamba nataka tuzungumzie kuhusu uhuru and the bible says neno linasema since the children have fresh and blood basi kwa kuwa watoto wameshiriki damu na mwili he to shared in their humanity yeye naye vivyo hivyo alishiriki yayo hayo so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death that is the devil ili kwa njia ya mauti amharibu yeye aliyekuwa na nguvu za mauti yani imbilisi and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death na akawaache huru wale ambao kwamba maisha yao yote kwa hofu ya mauti walikuwa katika hali ya utumwa For surely it is not angels he helps maana ni hakika hatuai asili ya malaika but abraham's descendants ila alitoa asili ya mzao wa ibrahimu for this reason he had to be made like his brother 
us in every way. Hivyo ili mpasa kufananishwa na ndugu yake katika mambo yote. In order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God. Apate kuwa kuhani mkuu mwenye rehema, mwaminifu katika mambo yote ya Mungu. And that he may make atonement for the sins of people. Na ili afanye suluhu kwa dhambi za watu wake. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted. Na kwa kuwa mwenyewe aliteswa alipojaribiwa, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Aweza kuwasaidia na wao wanaojaribiwa. Shall we pray? Na tuombe. Father in the mighty name of Jesus. Bwana katika jina la Yesu Christ. We adore you because of this moment. Tunakuinua kwa maana ya wakati huu. Yes Lord, is a time when things are being done in a different way. Ni kweli Bwana ni wakati ambapo mambo yanafanywa kitofauti. Thank you because you have not changed. Lakini ni asante maana wewe haujabadilika. Scriptures declare you are the same yesterday, today and forever. Maandiko yanasema wewe ni yule jana, leo na hata milele. And today we receive your freedom, O Lord. Na leo tunapokea uhuru wako Bwana. I pray may your word come with its power. Naomba ya kwamba neno lako likaje na nguvu yake. Touching every life under this voice. Likiguza kila mmoja ambaye anasikia hii sauti. To the glory and honor of your name. Kwa utukufu wa jina lako. I silence the voices of deception. Na nyamazisha sauti zote za uongo. And the voices of evil. Na sauti zote za uovu. And I declare your name the name above every other name. Na ninatangaza jina lako nililo juu ya majina mengine. In Jesus mighty name. Katika jina la Yesu. Church as I said I want to do a series on freedom. Kanisa kama nilivyo tangulia kusema nataka kutoa mafunzo kuhusu uhuru. And the epistle to the Hebrews na waraka huwa wa Hebrania is one of those good epistles. Ni moja wapo ya zile nyaraka ambazo ni nzuri. Especially in the way it relates the Old Testament times. Haswa kuhusu jinsi ambavyo inalinganisha na maandiki ama ya agano ya kale. Practices and traditions with the life of Jesus. Itikadi ambazo zilifanyika wakati wa Yesu. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know the all the teaches how the old covenant Na, is completed and fulfilled in the new. Na mwandishi anaelekeza jinsi ambavyo agano la kale linatimizwa katika agano lile jipya. Actually as you speak about freedom. Na unapozungumza kuhusu uhuru, we cannot talk about it and forget how Israel was in slavery in Egypt. Hatuwezi sahau vile ambavyo Waisraeli walikuwa katika utumwa pale Misri. And how God delivered them with his mighty power. Na jinsi ambavyo Mungu aliwakomboa kwa nguvu zake. In fact the same Swahili word for Passover is the same for Easter. Na lile neno la Pasaka ni lile lile la Easter. Because it is a moment that defined the freedom of Israel. Maana ni wakati ambapo ulie unanena kuhusu uhuru wa Israeli. But their physical freedom lakini uhuru wao wa kawaida our spiritual freedom. Uliweza kufunika uhuru wetu wa kiroho. And the portion of scripture that you've just read. Na lile andiko ambalo tumelisoma. Is a description of the human nature and human life of Christ. Ni maelezo kuhusu uh, ubinadamu wa Yesu. How he desired to bring freedom and deliverance to the human race. Jinsi alitamani kuleta ukombozi kwa wanadamu. But for him to be able to do that conclusively. Lakini ili kwamba afanye hivyo kikamilifu. He had to be come like us in La, nature. Lazima angefanyika kama sisi. You know Paul speaking to the Philippians. Paulo akiwanenea wa Filipi. In Philippians 2 6 and 7. Katika wa Filipi mlango wa pili mstari wa 6 na 7. He says that who being in the very nature God. Anasema kwamba alipokuwa katika hali ya uungu. You know he's talking about Jesus being in the very nature God. Ananena kuhusu Yesu kwamba alikuwa katika hali ya uungu. He did not consider equality with God as something to hold on to. Hakuchukulia kule kutoshana ama kufanana na Mungu kama jambo la kuchukulia bure. He made himself nothing. Lakini alijifanya kuwa kitu kisicho. The very nature of of a servant. Akichukua ile hali ya kuwa mtumwa. Being made into human likeness. Akafanyika kama mwanaadam. You no know, that is the mystery that the world sometimes do not understand. Hii ndio siri ambayo ulimwengu haujafahamu. How God took the nature of human. Jinsi Mungu alichukua hali ya mwanadamu. But the most important part of that. Lakini la muhimu pale. Is that he did it for us. Ni kwamba alifanya kwa ajili yetu. And I think that is why the writer of the Hebrew the same. Na nadhani ndio maana mwandishi wa Hebrews anasema. The children had fresh and blood. Ya kwamba wale wana walikuwa na mwili na damu. He took of their humanity. Akachukua wanadamu wao. I mean God is not working a freedom he does not understand. Ina maanisha Mungu hatuletei uhuru asioelewa. He wanted to help us humans. Anataka 
tusaidie sisi kama so wanadamu came in our nature kwa hivyo akaja katika hali yetu suffered in the sufferings we have been suffering akateseka mateso ambayo tunateseka went through some of the things that we go through akapitia mambo ambayo mengine tunapitia when you read the gospels unaposoma injili you hear times he was hungry unaona wakati mwingine alikuwa na njaa at times he went to sleep wakati mwingine akaenda kulala no at times he was tired wakati mwingine akawa amechoka no at times he felt bothered by the people wakati mwingine anasumbuliwa na watu i mean the same things inamaanisha mambo yale yale humans go through ambayo wanadamu wanapitia christ came and went through them kristo pia akaja akapitia so that he may be able to help us ili kwamba akaja tusaidia and in fact chapter 2 verse 16 of hebrews na sura ya pili mstari wa 16 the bible says it is not angels that he helped inasema kwamba hakuja kuwasaidia malaika but the descendants of abraham lakini ni wale wana wa abraham what i mean is anavyo maanisha it was for our sake ilikuwa ni kwa ajili yetu i think the old song ule wimbo ambao ni wakali it better unasema vizuri zaidi the sufferings of jesus on the cross kule kuteseka kwa yesu msalabani it was to set me free ilikuwa ni ya kunikomboa the pain of jesus on the cross ule uchungu wa yesu msalabani it was to set me free ilikuwa ni kwa ajili ya kunikomboa so when jesus was entering into jerusalem to go and die kwa hivyo wakati yesu anaingia yerusalemu ili aende akafe he was doing that for all of us alikuwa anaifanya hivyo kwa ajili yetu he offered himself akajitoa yeye mwenyewe so by his death ili kwamba kupitia kama uti yake destroy the devil angamize shetani give freedom to the human race atupe uhuru wale wanadamu take the you know the, 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 the place of a high priest na achukue nafasi ya kuhani mkuu offer atonement for the people na atoe uh, suluhu kwa dhambi za watu wote no, right now as we speak wakati huu tunapoongea the world is crying for freedom ulimwengu mzima unalilia uhuru people are in lockdowns and curfews and stay at home watu wamefungia manyumbani na wanazuiliwa kutoka nje they are asking for freedom to socialize again wanaomba uhuru wa kutangamana wengine tena to do what they want they, they have been doing all the time uhuru wa kufanya mambo ambao wamekuwa wakiyafanya freedom to move out and do their businesses again uhuru wa kutoka nje wafanye biashara zao freedom even to congregate in a church uhuru hata wa kukusanyika kanisani can tell you right now we are preaching to an empty sanctuary nikwambie sasa tunahubiri kanisa lisilo na watu but i know many of you are hearing lakini us lakini najua kwamba wengi wenu mnatusikia hallelujah hallelujah you know, people are looking for freedom watu wanatafuta uhuru you know the very privileges that have been taken away by covid 19 zile haki ambazo zimechukuliwa na ugonjwa wa covid 19 and they said even freedom to do whatever they want na uhuru pia wa kufanya yote watakayo but what is real freedom lakini uhuru wa kweli ni gani can you be in a lockdown and be free je unaweza kuwa umefungiwa na ukue huru can you be in a prison and be free unaweza kuwa pale jela na ukue ukue huru because soon this will be over ah wakati ujao huwa mambo yote yataisha soon it will be over haya yote yatakuja kuisha can you be in an unjust society and be free lakini utakuwa katika mandhari ambayo haina haki na ukue huru in the words of jeta walker eh wakati jelka walter alinena he said yes alisema ndio true freedom is not what is outside uhuru wa kweli sio yale yaliyo nje but what is inside a person lakini ni yale yaliyo ndani ya mwanadamu if you are liberated from within kama wamekombolewa kutokana na ndani then we can say you are free basi tunaweza sema uko huru look at people like job tazama watu kama ayubu you know the bible tells us he lost everything neno linatuambia alipoteza kila kitu literally everything he had alipoteza kila kitu alichokuwa yeah, nacho this man the bible says he bowed down and worshiped lakini neno linasema alinama na kumwabudu mungu yet many people would curse god are the smallest of troubles they encounter watu wengi watamlaani mungu wakipitia shida Look kidogo at people like paul tazama watu kama paul one time he's writing to the philippian church wakati mmoja anawaandikia wa filipi hallelujah hallelujah in chapter number 1 verse 21 katika sura ya kwanza mstari wa 21 he is writing from prison by the way anaandikia akiwa pale korokoroni but then he says for me to live as christ lakini anasema kwamba kuishi kwangu ni kristo and to die as gain na hata kufa kwangu ni faida he says if i continue living ina maanisha nikiendelea kuishi in the 
your body eh, nikiwa katika mwili this will mean fruitful labor for me hii inamaanisha ni kazi ya faida kwangu he says what do i choose nasema nitachagua kitu gani he says i'm torn between the two nasema kwamba sijui nichague lipi that's a free person speaking angalia huyu ni mtu aliye na uhuru anaonengea he's bound by the limitation of being in the body hajafungwa na hali za umwili and even his departure from the body is even a bigger blessing na hata akitoka mwilini ni baraka kubwa it is possible to live a life of fulfilling freedom that's why i said it is not so much about the things happening around you it's about the spiritual the inner freedom lakini ni uhuru ule wa ndani ama wa kiroho hallelujah in the name of jesus hallelujah now to those who know jesus kwa wale ambao wanamfahamu yesu paul says in galatians chapter 5 verse 1 paul anasema katika wa galatia 5 mstari wa 1 stand firm and do not let yourself be burdened kwamba simama imara na usiache ubebeshwe mizigo by the yoke of slavery kwa ile nira ya utumwa to the person who is looking for freedom kwa yule anayetafuta uhuru jesus says yesu akasema come to me nijie mimi all you who are weary and burdened nyinyi wote mliochoka na mmebebeshwa mizigo i will give you rest na nitawapa pumziko in matthew 11 verse 28 katika mathayo 11:28 us to look at a number of freedoms that Christ have won for us. Nataka tuangalie aina za uhuru ambazo Yesu ametupa. But today I'll just deal with one. Lakini leo nitazungumzia moja. Freedom from sin. Uhuru kutokana na dhambi. You can walk free from sin. Unaweza tembea ukiwa na uhuru kutokana na dhambi. I know there are a lot of things that we see around us. Najua kuna mambo mengi tunayaona yanatuzingira. But somebody, somebody is reasoning. Pengine kuna mtu anayesikiza. And is already feeling and you know covered by the yokes of of sin na tayari anasikia amekandamizwa na nira ya dhambi they are not able to liberate themselves hawawezi kujikomboa wenyewe i will tell you you are not supposed to liberate yourself nikwambie haufai kujikomboa mwenyewe one came to save and deliver you unaye aliyekuja na kukuomboa wewe his name is jesus christ the lord ni yesu kristo bwana when john saw him coming wakati yohane alimwona akija he declared behold akataze akasema tazama the lamb of god mwana kodoa who mungu who takes away the sins of the world anayechukua dhambi za ulimwengu in john chapter 1 verse 29 katika yohane 1:29 you know the world's biggest challenge eh, is sin ile changamoto kubwa ya dunia Because ni dhambi sin is what has alienated man from god maana dhambi ndio imetenganisha mwanadamu na mungu sin is what has introduced death and Th- suffering to our world dhambi ndio imeleta kifo na kuteseka hapa duniani what has hindered the face of god from shining upon the human race sin ndio inazuilia uso wa bwana kutuangazia sisi wanadamu sin has deceived man that he can handle life alone dhambi inamdanganya mwanadamu kwamba anaweza jishughulikia maisha mwenyewe it keeps on burdening him father na bado inaendelea kumkamdamiza zaidi in fact paul speaks to the romans haswa paulo anawaambia warumi chapter 3 verse 23 sura ya 3:23 says for all have sin nasema kwamba sisi wote tumefanya dhambi and fallen short of the glory of god tumepungukiwa na utukufu wa mungu when people decide to not believe in the saving grace of god wakati watu wameamua hawatafuata ile nguvu ya kukomboa ya mungu when people decide to reject god watu wanaamua kumwacha mungu he gives them over basi anawaachilia to the deceptive acts of sin anawaachilia katika udanganyifu wa dhambi the things we see are just fruits Mambo of sinfulness tuna, in man. Mambo tunayaona ni matunda ya dhambi. And I love the way Paul explains it to the Romans. Nayapendezwa na vile Paulo anawaelekea warumi. Sura ya kwanza. Three verses he describes what have given birth to all of these things. Mistari mitatu inazungumzia mambo ambayo yananena. Verse 23 he says. Mistari wa 23 anasema. That men exchange the glory of the immortal God. Ya kwamba wanadamu wamebadilisha utukufu wa Mungu for images made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles na wamembadilisha na sanamu zinazofananishwa na na wanyama when people reject god in his nature as god wakati watu wamemwasi mungu katika hali yake ya kuwa mungu and they make things for themselves na wanajitengenezea vitu wenyewe they can worship ili kwamba waziabudu the bible says he gives them over to their desires ili inasema anawaachilia katika matamanio yao 25 he says they meaning men 
uh, uh, now wanadamu they exchange the truth of god for a lie wamebadilisha ukweli wa mungu kwa uongo and they worshiped you know and served created things na wanaabudu ama wanatumikia vitu vilivyoumbwa you know god is so good and powerful mungu ni mwema na ako na nguvu he made everything na akaumba kila kitu yet men have rejected the creator lakini wanadamu wamemwasi muumbaji to worship the creation ili kwamba waabudu vilivyoumbwa people worship their leaders watu wanaabudu viongozi wao people worship their money wengine wanaabudu pesa zao people worship mountains wengine wanaabudu milima na miti people worship their education pia wengine wanaabudu masomo yao when people reject the godliness of god lakini watu wanapomwasi mungu when people reject god as god watu wanapomwasi mungu kama mungu then they are drawn away basi wanaachiliwa into a lot of sinfulness waingie katika dhambi mingi verse 28 he explains his father mstari wa 28 anaelezea he says father more anasema zaidi ya hayo since they did not think it worthwhile kwa maana hawakuiona ikiwa ya maana to retain the knowledge of god waweze kuhifadhi uh, hekima ya mungu and they know about god ni kweli wanajua kuhusu mungu but they don't think it worthwhile lakini hawaoni ikiwa ya maana retaining that knowledge kuhifadhi huo ujuzi the bible says he gave them over to a depraved mind ina maanaisa kwamba akawaachilia kwa akili zisizokuwa na kitu do what ought not to be done wafanya mambo yasiyofaa kufanywa it is these things ni mambo kama haya the rejection of god kukataliwa na mungu the rejection of truth kukata ama kukataa ukweli that has but all the sinful acts we see around us dio imesababisha zile dhambi tunazoziona yes but greed uh, pia na ulafi and deceit na imeleta uongo malice and arrogance imeleta mambo ya uh, mambo maovu disobedience and murder kuasi na pia kuwana immorality and homosexuality uovu wa aina yoyote the things that God has said those who do them will not inherit the kingdom of God mambo ambayo Mungu amesema wanaoyafanya hawataridhi ufalme wake yet friends we are not without a help lakini marafiki hatujakosa usaidizi Christ came to deal with the sin Kristo alikuja ashughulikie zile dhambi He came to deal with it conclusively alikuja azishughulikie kikamilifu He came to deal with it completely alikuja kuzishughulikia kikamilifu Number one. la kwanza to deal with the guilt of sin kushughulikia a uh, a uh, ile uh, uh, kusikia kwamba umefanya dhambi you see when one does something which is wrong wakati mtu amefanya jambo lilisilo kuwa sawa there is an accusing voice within them kunayo sauti inayomhukumu ndani yake they pretend not to hata wakijifanya kwamba hawaihisi that's why the right of the proverbs said ndio maana mwandishi wa zaburi anasema the wicked man frees though no one pursues kwamba yule muovu anapotea hata kama hakuna mtu anayemkimbia You see, you see people saying there is no god wengine wanasema hakuna mungu yet when they steal public money lakini wanapoiba pesa ya uma they up in other countries wanaziwekeza katika nchi huza huko nje because they know they have done a wrong maana wanajua wamefanya kosa you know it is foolishness for anybody to think god does not exist ni ujinga kwa mtu kufikiria kwamba mungu hayupo but christ came to deal even with that lakini yesu alikuja alishughulikia hali hiyo so ever that we were accused of ya kwamba yote yale tuliyohukumiwa he took the blame on our behalf akachukua lawama kwa ajili yetu and the bible tells us in second corinthians verse chapter 5 na neno linatuambia katika wakorintho wa pili sura ya 5 mstari wa 21 god made him who had no sin to be seen mungu akamfanya yule asiyekuwa na dhambi akamfanya kuwa dhambi for us kwa ajili yetu when christ was dying upon the cross wakati yesu alikuwa na anawekezwa pale msalabani eloi eloi lama sabakidhan akalia eloi eloi lama sabakidhan my father my father oh. why have you forsaken babangu, me babangu babangu bona umeniacha he was crying because his god could not look at sin alikuwa analia kwa sababu mungu hangetazama dhambi at that very hour hilo lisa christ was made the sin kwa katika hilo lisa yesu akaofanyika dhambi to take away the blame and everything about sin 
ili kwamba achukue lawama na kila kitu kuhusu and dhambi everyone who received jesus kwa yeyote aliyempokea yesu there is no condemnation hakuna kuhukumiwa declares paul in romans 8 verse 1 ndivyo anatangaza paulo katika warumi 8 he came to remove the guilt of sin akaja atoe ato lawama ya dhambi you can walk in freedom ya kwamba unaweza tembea katika uhuru you can walk in freedom unaweza tembea katika uhuru he came to deal also with the punishment of sin akaja pia kushughulikia adhabu ya dhambi the wages of sin is death kwa maana adhabu ya dhambi ni mauti there is nothing else that can describe the punishment of, of sin hakuna jambo lingine la kuelezea adhabu like what jesus went through on the cross kuliko vile yesu alipitia pale msalabani he died a shameful death akafa kifo cha he cha cha died among sinners akafa akafa kifo pamoja na wafanya dhambi he that had no sin yeye ambaye hakuwa na dhambi he went to the cross on your behalf akaenda msalabani kwa ajili yako and therefore paul tells us ndio maana paulo anatuambia now that you have been set free from sin sasa kwa maana mmefanyia uhuru kutokana na dhambi and have become slaves to god na mmekufanyika watumwa kwake mungu the benefit you reap ile faida mnayopata leads to holiness inawaelekeza katika utaua na matokeo yake is eternal life ni uzima wa milele christ have dealt with the punishment of sin kristo ameshughulikia adhabu ya dhambi oh what a freedom oh uhuru ulioje that if you are in jesus kwamba yeyote aliye ndani ya yesu though they may die in this body hata kama watakufa kwa mwili huu they will never die hawatakufa actually they are departure from the flesh kuondoka kwao katika mwili is an arrival ni kufika kwao at home pale kwao nyumbani christ died also kristo akafa pia to deal with the power of sin ashughulikia nguvu za uh, dhambi you know the scripture we read hebrews chapter number 2 maandiko ambayo tumesoma wa hebrania uh, sura ya pili that by his death nasema kwamba kupitia kifo chake he destroyed the devil akaangamiza ibilisi oh my god mm-hmm. and he set free everyone that was under the slavery of death na akafanya huru aliyekuwa chini ya utumwa wa dhambi now the enemy the devil uh, yule adui ambaye ni ibilisi produced a slave the slavery of sinfulness alileta utumwa wa dhambi that is why men feel helpless ndio maana wanadamu wanasikia hawana msaada i've met people in my life nimepatana na wana, watu wengine maishani mwangu tell me what i did i don't want to do it again wanaosema kwamba nilichofanya sitaki kufanya tena but without knowing they find themselves in the same quagmire again lakini bila kujua wanapata wamerudia lile lile kosa they have been captive wanasikia kwamba wamefungwa i've met people who are saying i will never drink you know be an alcoholic anymore ina mpatana wengine wasema sitalewa tena they even swear hadi wana wanakiri they swear they will not commit adultery anymore wanasema kwamba hawatafanya uzizi tena but they are not able to liberate themselves lakini hawezi kujikomboa wenyewe because it's not so much about what they say maana haihusu yale wanaosema it's about christ doing it for them lakini inahusu yesu anayewafanyia it is him that delivers ni yeye anaye komboa the bible says in colossians 1 verse 13 14 neno linasema katika wa kolosai 1 that he rescued us from the dominion of darkness kwamba alitukomboa kutokana na utawala wa giza from the dominion of darkness kutokana na utawala wa giza oh god is able mungu anaweza god is able mungu anaweza i say god is able sema mungu anaweza i say again god is able sema tena mungu anaweza if the sun set you free kama mwana amekufanya huru you will be free indeed utafanyika huru kabisa he says in roman 6 verse 14 anasema katika warumi 6 for sin shall have no no more dominion over you ya kwamba dhambi haitakuwa na utawala juu yako oh come to jesus oh basi mjia yesu in this easter holidays katika msimu huu wa pasaka i know you will not be able to celebrate as much as you have done in other years ya kwamba hautasherekea vile ambavyo umezoea because you be at home maana utakuwa pale nyumbani joy there is no more holidays and traveling najua kwamba hakuna likizo tena na kutembea experience easter for what it is huu ndio wakati wa kupatana na pasaka jinsi ilivyo you receive your freedom basi na upokee uhuru wako every 
addiction break in Jesus name to the glory of God because he came to set me free to set you free yes you'll be tempted you'll be tested but the Bible tells us rejects the devil or assist the devil and he will free from you you resist him when you have Jesus in your life all oh, are the cross the power of sin is defeated the yoke is destroyed hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. there are millions and millions of testimonies across the world of people who have received freedom from the power of addiction freedom Uhuru. even from the things that and habits that had captivated their lives even you can be delivered and let me tell you Jesus also came yes to defeat the effect and the presence of sin. When he comes, when he returns, we will never see sin anymore. We will be away from the presence of sin. And I love how Paul describes this in 1 Corinthians 15. Verse number 52 to 56. When he's speaking about, let me start from 51. Listen and I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the trickling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable and will be changed. Fifty-three. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable. And the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable. And the mortal with immortality. Then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, oh death, is your victory? Where, oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. A day is coming. Maratena atakuja. And that is why Jesus also came. Yo maana Yesu pia kaja. A day is coming. Maana kunayo siku inakuja. And we shall be taken away from these sufferings we see. Ambapo tutanyakuliwa kutokana na kuteseka huku. We are going to a place where there are no viruses. Taenda mahali ambapo hakuna virusi. To a place where there is no mess. Mahali ambapo hakuna mashida. To a place where there is no death. Mahali ambapo hakuna kufa. Oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the writer of this scripture that I've just read. Na yule muandishi you know he uses you know a, a, a form of language that is interesting anatumia lugha fulani ya kupendeza sana he say when that time comes anasema wakati huo utakapokuja oh we shall mock death basi tuta 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 uh, hey. Where is your sting? Where is your sting? And he says the sting of death is sin. It shall be completely dealt with. Passover. It's not just a time to celebrate. But it's a time to receive freedom. Let sin be defeated in your life. To the glory of God. 
Surrender to the cross. He is able. He shed his blood for you. You can walk in freedom today. Don't say I don't know what to do. Don't say I don't know how to handle this. Just go and surrender to the cross. Give up yourself to him. You can walk free. To the glory of God the Father. In Jesus mighty name. So wherever you are I want you to rise up. And I would want you to. You know even in your home just rise up. And Na, make a prayer to God. Na hata ukio pale nyumbani, inuka, na uombe. Jesus died to give us freedom. Maana yesu alikufa, ili atupe uhuru. The most important freedom. Lile uhuru, ama uhuru freedom uhuru from sin. Uhuru kutokana na dhambi. Sin is what alienated man from God. Dhambi diyo ilie mtenganisha mwana damu na mungu. And it is what Jesus came to deal with. Na ndiyo yesu alikuja. Today you can walk in freedom. Leo unaeza tembea katika uhuru. In the name of the Lord. To the man who do not know Jesus as Lord. Who walk in captivity. Jesus is here and is at work. To the man who knows Jesus. Yet is walking under the yoke of sin. Here is your hour of deliverance. Just ask him Lord. Save me today. Set me free today. I surrender to you. I give my life to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I also want to pray with those who are saying we have issues. Saying I'm sick in my body. You can just lift up one of your hands. Lift up your right hand and put your left hand on your chest. And believe God this very hour that is working for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we have been saved by faith, even through grace, oh Lord. And thank you because this freedom from sin have dealt with even the effect and the punishment of sin. I pray in the name of Jesus. As your people are believing you. May power flow now. Touching them in their homes, Lord. Touching them in their offices, Lord. Touching them even as they travel, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Every sickness be defeated now. Every force of darkness be defeated now. By the power of the cross of Jesus. I declare freedom upon your people. In Jesus mighty name We pray and we give God the glory Amen We give God the glory You can celebrate the Lord from wherever you are And once again thank you For joining us for this online service Let's continue believing God Who is able to take away this pandemic you can also support the work of the Lord Even with your giving You can use the details on your screen And the Lord God will bless you Once again from here KEG Manuel Church God bless you In Jesus mighty name Amen Hallelujah Amen